I've copied this program from the article and this will allow us to play one sequence at a time. You'll see here that we can change the sequence number with key hits. When I press the one key, the sequence will be one. And likewise with the two and three keys on the keyboard. And then here we just see that it's looking at what the sequence value is. If it's one, then the first frame is zero and the last frame is 69. If it's two, the first frame is 70 and the last frame is 70, or 130. And if the sequence is three, the first frame is 131 and the last frame is 171. And I know this because the person who created, who animated this mesh told me those numbers. Down here, we're using the app time divided by 100 for the frame value. But then we're modulating the frame by the by this, which is uh, the last frame minus the first frame, which equals the length of the frame, the length of the sequence. So when we call this f mod f function, it divides this frame value by the length of the frame of the sequence until this is a value between zero and this value. It's like if you uh, if the time is 3.45 p.m. and you want to find out how many minutes there are, uh, you just, the minutes value is 45. You just divide the hours by 60 until the value you have is less than 60. And then at the end we add this, uh, the first frame here. And if this isn't clear, then it's explained better in the article, and I recommend you take a look at that and then we just animate it like normal. So right now it's playing the idle sequence in a loop and I'll press the 2 key and now it's playing the walk sequence And you'll notice it's playing the same frames over and over again, but you can't see any transition when it loops, and it's perfectly smooth. And the same thing goes for the running animation. I've copied this program from the article. And this will demonstrate how we can use animation blending to smoothly transition between two sequences. Now, like before, I have the uh, keyboard input set up to affect the sequence that's being played. But I have this blend value here. And this says that if the sequence equals 2, the blend value will keep getting just a little value subtracted from it each frame. And if the sequence is 3, the blend value will get a little bit added to it each frame. And then here we just clamp the blend value so that it's always between 0 and 1. And now I'm going to blend these two different sequences with the blend value. So the first thing I'm going to do is to play the walk sequence. And I'm going to use a blend value of 1 because I want this to have a 100% effect. And then after I've set the walk frame, I'm also going to animate the mesh with the run frame, with the run sequence. And for the blend value, I'm going to use this blending value that we talked about. So first we're playing the walk sequence and that will have just a complete 100% effect like it did before. And then we're going to play the run sequence on top of that. And if the blend value when we play the run sequence is 1, then we'll just see the normal run sequence completely with a full effect. If the blend value is 0, then we won't see any effect of the run sequence at all. And if it's somewhere between, then we'll see a mixture of walking and running.
So here he is walking, and I'm going to press the 2 key, which will make him transition into the run sequence. And you can see now he's running, and if I press the 1 key again, he'll transition back into the walk sequence. And it's a nice smooth transition that looks very natural. Now there's one more technique I want to show you, and that's split animation. You'll remember that I said we can animate any entity in the hierarchy recursively. So here I'm going to find this base of the spine bone, and I'll just call that spine. And during the loop, first I'm going to animate the whole mesh with the walk sequence and then I'm going to animate only the spine bone recursively. So this will animate the spine and all its children, so it'll animate the whole upper body with the run sequence. And you'll notice here I'm dividing app time by only 50, so it's going to be a little bit faster. So let's see what that does. So you can see our character here is dancing around and having a good time. A more practical application for this might be to play a walking sequence for the lower body and then you can make the upper body shoot a gun or swing a sword or do something like that.